Before we get into this video, guys, I also wanted to mention that hosted by Zim2 Capital, Swimbird Sports is having a live event. So check the description down below. Enter your information here in this form and register now if you are interested. Let's get straight into this video. What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital. We're here with Justin Schroen, president of Swimbird Sports. How are you doing today, Justin? Very well, Aaron. Thanks for having me on. Yes, for sure. I'm excited to talk about the company. So can you start by giving us a brief introduction to Swimbird Sports, along with telling us a little bit more about yourself as well? Sure, by all means. Um, if you don't mind, I'll start at the last question first. I actually come out of the junior mining space. I was vice president, uh, corporate, corporate development with uh, commerce resources. And of course, I've worked with many other mining companies over a decade uh, or more, actually. I uh, love the business. Um, but I've always been a bit of an entrepreneur on the side. I've always had many things on the go. Swimbird is one of those things. It was never intended to wind up here, but just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We just came to trade on the CSE uh, late last week. So it's a fledgling stock. Uh, Aaron, you're one of the first uh, promotional outreachers. You know, we have a lot of legwork ahead of us. But Swimbird is, is, um, uh, is based completely around one hub, which is a revolutionary sporting uh, product. And this product came to be invented uh, by my brothers and I over several years. Um, when, we, when you're ready, we can get into more details about that. Um, it was a very simple thing, supposedly, that wound up being quite complicated to achieve. And by the time we had achieved it, we realized we had a game changer. And, you know, me being in the mining business and what have you, as time went on, um, angel investors came in, etc. You know, quite a bit of money was spent on intellectual property. And because I worked you know, with a whole bunch of mining guys out of the Zim2 offices and with all, you know, shoulder by shoulder with other mm. companies, and I had so many mining shareholders uh, that I spoke to on a regular basis that I'd known for years, they started finding out about it. And next thing I knew, I had all these mining investors that were uh, interested in coming in uh, on the seed round uh, for a new company, which is quite stunning. And what that means is that we are, to my understanding, the very, very first thing of this type in the junior markets and the first aquatic board sport to be launched with the power of the public markets behind it, which is a bomb waiting to go off, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a very interesting story, actually, because, you know, we've covered a lot of mining companies as well. But um, that's that's an awesome story. And it sounds like you guys have, you know, first mover advantage. So Swimbird, yeah. Swimbird Sports is, like you said, a very unique company. Uh, that plans on developing Swimbird into a global aquatic sports and lifestyle brand built around the new sport of swimboarding. Can you tell yeah. our viewers more about this opportunity? Well, uh, this, you might have just describe sort of what swimboarding is. You've may have mm -hmm. heard about swimboards before, you know, and there's a bit of a misnomer because they're not swimboards. In fact, until now, there's never been a board in which a human being, and I'm talking about any human being now, can just hop on and swim. And by swim, I mean, what we mean is it doesn't have to be formal swimming, although the board is designed to do that. It can just be play. The point is, is that it's a product that completely releases uh, and harnesses the human body's power in the water. You use dive fins, medium length dive fins. They're part, part of the, of the uh, physical equation, but the completely unique design of the board braces your hips and your core right in the surface area, which is impossible for any other board. It's never been possible before. Um, it took uh, 13 prototypes, tested in winter in Vancouver in all conditions, repeated fails, uh, until we eventually achieved the, the perfect balance. Uh, Pre-production boards were taken to, to Greece and to, and to uh, Hawaii, obviously all throughout different places in Canada. We already started to develop quite a following. Lifeguards in Greece became very interested. And we took the, those are the original long nose boards. Um, that product was since redefined into the, the ultimate, which is slimmed right down. Think, think SUV becomes Porsche. Mm -hmm. And the light, light product, eight, just over eight pounds, three foot two. The idea was to have ease of ownership, ease of use, a board for everybody. And what now that might not sound like a big deal, but that puts it as the nexus of a sport, several sports actually, because of what you can do. Uh, a brand, because if they like the activity, the branded clothing, et cetera, et cetera, will ultimately follow on with that. People don't realize that surfing, uh, Billabong and big companies like that don't own surfing. 
They don't own surf. We're the first sport that will actually control through intellectual property, both the tool and the branding. That means we have brand integrity, we can control the experience. And, um, and obviously, yeah, from there, it just goes out into, into aquatic fitness and it just keeps expanding. And it's going to, uh, and there's seven, there's 7 billion people in the world who mostly mm -hmm. love the water. So um, it, it, is, it is a bomb ready to go off for sure. Um, there are so many people who are aware of it. Uh, others, other brands are aware of it. We've had a lot of, a lot of bumping up with some pretty powerful brands. Um, there will definitely be, in my opinion, room for partnerships and strategic partnerships, etc. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's an interesting story. So this is the first time I've heard of swim boarding, which is pretty exciting. You know, can you tell me more about the market you're targeting along with the potential opportunities? Well, the initial, uh, the market, not to, not to be funny, but the market is everyone uh, with a primary focus on Europe and North America. Um, we are not targeting the surfing market, but we will, it will get there. We realized very, very early in that surfing was very, very small and that most people couldn't do it. Even supping is difficult for most people. The money is in the flat water. The money is in the flat water. The board is a rocket on waves, but it is designed to be optimal, um, to be used effectively in the flat water, like the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, your local lake in summertime in Ontario or DC. Um, and it can be used in a swimming pool, like meaningfully used in a swimming pool. And so you can just fill in all the gaps in all these different markets, aquatic fitness, um, lifestyle recreation. The central core is fun in the sun with friends and family, and everyone goes along. Um, the motto of the, of the company is no one gets left behind on the beach. And we are, that is really important because if you consider yourself a vacation, Aaron, I think you mentioned you might have gone to Greece, you went to Greece before. Yes, I have. Yeah. yeah. But if you imagine a family's, let's just say, on the beach in Hawaii or what have you, there are all these activities, but if the kids can't go, the adults are not going to go. Mm -hmm. They're not going to leave the kids on the beach. Exactly. So we, our sizes will go right down to boards with five-year-olds and kids, Aaron, they go gaga for it. Uh, right now, we only have sizes down to teenage boards, like sort of in the pre-production boards. Mm -hmm. But these little five-year-olds, they won't let go of the board. They'll follow you around nagging to play with us somewhere. You're going to talk, you know, play with them on the board. But they, the, that is very important because there's your huge growth market, right? If they're born, if they are, if they are born into the sport uh, and the learning curve is so fast, and you'll see in some of the stuff I'm going to give you, but what that means is the skill level just goes like that. So before you know it, people are inventing their own games. Mm -hmm. You've got people doing somersaults and Eskimo rolls, and um, the sky is the limit because they learn so fast, and suddenly they become very good at it. And kids, of course, as we know, are fearless, and mm -hmm. you know, you can tell I'm excited, Aaron. Yeah, no, it's great to see it. So let's talk a little bit about. Production. So the company will be producing swim boards this year with the majority yes. of them being sent yeah. to Athens. Yeah. Um, like, you know, we talked about, I've been to Greece, beautiful country. Um, can you tell us more about the board itself and why Greece? Well, earlier on in this, we made a decision and the, and the right one to not attempt to manufacture the board ourselves, but to use OEM agreements. And we have currently in place an OEM agreement with Tahi Sport, which is the premier uh, board production facility in the Western world. It's owned by the KJK Sports Group. Uh, uh, the, the, the main factory is in Vance, France. And these boards are mass produced, but they approximate the, the, the lightness of a, of, a, of a fiberglass board, but the strength of a, of a high quality um, uh, plastic board. So these things are durable. The first 50, of the, mold, uh, the mold is the most difficult thing to make. And that's, that's almost completed, the first mold. They're precision milled that are huge blocks of aluminum. And we can get into the process of that later if you like. But the first 50 are coming off the line in France uh, somewhere in around late March, early April. And those boards are going into our principal target launch market, which is Athens, Greece. The, uh, early on in the, in, the, in the company, we identified <laughs> nine, nine main areas in the world that were, Aaron, that were disproportionately influential, meaning the number of people that would be exposed in those nine bottlenecks and the media sort of the, the, the cultural perception was disproportionate to many other places. The Athens Riviera is one of, one of those areas. It's like the thin point of the wedge for us. 
or the, the point of the spear. We have very strong allies, as you'll see in some of the stuff I'm going to show you. We already have very good relationships with like the top, top uh, resorts and hotels in that area, uh, some of the beach clubs. Um, you have huge millions of people coming through Athens Riviera, going off to the islands, etc. right? Plus a large city that is resident with awesome weather year round, as you know. I mean, a couple of cold winters, winter months, and that's it, it's back to being in the mm -hmm. water again. Um, and a huge profusion of opportunities for the board. From there, it will, be, it will sort of be, go out to Corfu, Mykonos, all of those islands. But the goal is, I'm a, I'm a former military man, so I tend to think in these terms, the goal mm -hmm. is to, to penetrate and dominate. So it's, in the Athens Riviera, we're not taking our finger off the pulse. We really have friends, allies, those 50 boards, they're going into Athens. Uh, there will be uh, the pre production boards are already there, as you'll see, and the stuff I'll show you. They look the same, you wouldn't know the difference, but they were pre production boards made in Vancouver. But there's already a fleet of them that is permanently resident in Athens. Um, so these boards now be folded in there. The hotels will get to see here's the mass production product, right? Because the goal is for um, the, to focus on the resorts because they're controllable sales, and each board will influence more retail buyers be exposed to more people and of course as you know from SUPS every hotel has to have one once the two once the first prestigious ones have it the next ones have to have it and so on and many of them are in chains right so once one 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 property gets the boards odds are it will spread through a corporate decision to all of uh, uh, the properties because you know these, these, these companies care about one thing and that's guest satisfaction and if there's demand for the product, which it really is, they must have it. And from there, basically, uh, uh, the marketing principles is you tried it on vacation, you went home, then you ordered it online. You got, got your own board online. Hmm. Oh, that sounds great. So what are some of the major catalysts on the horizon for Swimbird Sports that we should be looking out for? The next, the next catalyst that I'm looking forward looking to, it will be announcing the completion of the aluminum mold. Um, uh, obviously, we're going to be doing a lot of promotion between now and then. Um, the, the completion of that mold will be a very big moment in the, in the company's uh, history because now you have the capacity to just produce hundreds of thousands, you know, ultimately, and ultimately beyond that. Um, but at a high speed, um, and the next one will be the first, the, the next one will be the first successful pulls, what it's called, when they actually pull the first boards, you know. There are always things that have to be twiddled and tweaked around in, in manufacturing, as you know. You may have to twiddle something, you know, change the suction on the on the on the molds. Um, that will be the next catalyst, and of course, the third catalyst will be uh, the arrival of the boards in Athens, which we expect to be ideally sometime sometime in May, you know. And for those who know the story, they will know what that now means. We have a team, we have a marketing team ready. Um, Beyond that, the, the next catalyst will be actually the closing the first pre-production sales. The actual big run of boards will be coming in this December. That's the first 500. And we intend to have this completely spoken for by properties by the end of summer and be, add, be able to add to that. Once it picks up, obviously we'll, the, the volumes will, will increase and there'll be more and more molds made. Yeah, that should be a very exciting year for you guys. So what's yeah. the one thing you're most excited about for Swimbird Sports in the near term? The, the thing I'm most excited about after all this time is to see that first perfect mass-produced board come off the line. I mean, I, I, I hope to be in the factory in Vance, France. We're going to have, uh, I think, a promotional team there. It'll be filmed. You know, uh, I'm hoping Atahi will let us do something of a, of a factory walkthrough. Uh, we, we have a very great relationship with them. I'm, I'm confident they'll say, yeah, being in the cameras, being your investors in Atahi, you know, because they're about promotion too. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it, for me, that would be a very, very, and for my brothers, who have been, you know, with, between three of us, I'm the president, they're vice presidents, but technically I only have three presidents, and that has worked mm -hmm. very, very, very well uh, in decision-making. Um, you know, we, we hammer things out the way brothers do, but we always arrive at our decisions unanimously, and nine times out of ten, well, it's, it's the right thing to do, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's... That's great. That's an awesome story. So where's the best place for investors to find out more information about the company? The best place for people to find uh, information on the company is on our website right now. 
I'd like to say a couple of important things. First of all, the website is, is kind of a holding website. The real website is, is going to be quite a, a sophisticated affair, but, but currently this one is aimed at you know, the junior resource investor. We're not selling boards yet, so this is strictly a, getting you the information as an investor. There you will find an awesome PowerPoint, which you know, uh, I would like to kind of show you a little bit of, but the PowerPoint can, will contain four embedded videos. Uh, Aaron, these videos are key. We are a visual brand. It's very hard to imagine until you actually see, kabam, there it is in front of you. Then it speaks, the thing speaks for itself, uh, as the Romans used to say. Um, but mm -hmm. so, uh, so swimbird.com, S-W-M-B-R-D.com. And that name, as odd as it may sound, was a, was a trademarking triumph. We have been awarded that trademark in Europe for five different categories, the boards, bags, events. Um, and there's a couple other little, little mini categories, but it gets us the full enchilada. Hmm. And most, most, most people call it intentionally, when they see it, it looks like swimboard. So it's kind of a, it's a play on words. The company is mm -hmm. a bird, mm -hmm. but when they see it, it's a swimboard. But you, but patent wise, you couldn't put swim board on the board because it's too descriptive. So, mm -hmm. as far as the board's concerned, it's a swim swim board. If that makes if that makes sense. No, that's great. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks for explaining yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, you know, best of luck, Justin. I look forward to covering the company, and uh, hopefully, we can have you back on. Fantastic. I really appreciate. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to speaking to you about it again. Perfect. And thanks to your, and thanks to your audience. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.